Today, I want to talk about installing and using the OCI command line interface. It's a command line tool that you can use to administer all aspects of your OCI environment. Think of it as an alternative to working in the OCI console. Anything that the console can do, the CLI can do too. In some ways, it can do it better. Specifically, you can invoke the CLI from shell scripts, possibly scripts scheduled as cron jobs. Just the other day, I used it to automate shutting down some compute instances that aren't needed overnight and then starting them up in the morning. It's a very versatile tool that everyone working with OCI will probably need to become familiar with. The CLI isn't included in the standard supplied Oracle Linux compute images. So if you're going to run this in a compute instance, as I usually do, you will have to install it. That's a trivial exercise. It just comes down from the usual OCI Linux repositories. Once installed, there's a bit of configuration. You can make that as complicated as you want, but the default usually works for me. All it needs to know is your tenancy and user identifiers and the public-private key pair that you'll be using for authentication. So let's do it. This is a little micro instance running the usual OL8 image. So to install it as root, we run DNF install Python 3.6 OCI CLI. Now that's done, we can begin the configuration. It needs an SSH key and a configuration file. Um, the key can go anywhere, but by default for the configuration file, it will look for a file named config in a directory .oci in your home directory. So I'll create that, mkdir slash root slash dot oci. And I'm going to tighten up the permissions because if the permissions are too open on that file, the tool won't like it. So chmod 700 root.oci. Now, to generate my private key, I'm going to generate and store the key in the same directory that I'll be using for the configuration. So I'll do it down here, just using the standard SSH keygen facility, I'll build an RSA key called privkey.pem, and I won't bother with the passphrase. So that has created the key, privkey.pem. I'll need to extract the public key for reasons that will become clear in a moment. So OpenSSL RSA extracts the public key and I'll put it from privkey.pem. And there it is, that's what I'll be using shortly. Now, I have to tell OCI who I am when I use the CLI. And I do that by creating an API key. 
And that's what I'll do in the OCI console. So here I am logged on already. Within the console, I go to my profile, API keys. I've already got a couple set up. I'll add a third one, which we'll be using this one I've just configured, the keys I've just configured here. So add an API key and I shall paste in the public key that I extracted here. And add. It's identified the fingerprint from the key file and has generated this text here. This is the content of the configuration file that I need to create. So I'll copy all of that and create the file. VI config paste. And you see here, it's extracted the OSID for my username, my user account. It's also extracted the OSID for the tenancy. There's the fingerprint, the SSH fingerprint. And the only edits I have to do is tell it where my private key is stored. The final thing I need to do is again tighten up the permissions. That config file is too open. It won't work like that. That's more like it. It should now be ready for use. So what can you actually use it for? You can manage and report on all sorts of things. In principle, anything you can do through the console can also be done through the CLI. So let's go through a few simple examples. So first, a very, very simple example. I'm just going to list all the compartments that I have access to. OCI, IAM, compartment, list. And back comes the list of compartments. Uh, this one at the very bottom, now it's all formatted as a JSON document. Apparently there is a compartment called workshop. The description of that compartment is workshop. For comparison, if you look at what we have in the GUI, in the console, there's the workshop compartment, and there's the description. Perhaps I want to change the description. Well, I, I could do it through the console. That's just a very simple update. I shall do it with the OCI tool. command being OCI IAM, because I'm in the identity management area here, compartment update. What am I going to update? I'm going to update the description attribute. And which compartment? Give it the OCID that identifies my workshop compartment. And that should do the update. Done. So it's telling me here, the description is now OCI workshop. And we can check the same thing here. Let me refresh. OCI workshop has come through there. So just a very simple example of what you can do. Let's take another one. Maybe the object store. In the object store, 
I do have a bucket created. I have this bucket called public bucket. And my public bucket is empty. Get the same information from the OCI, from the COI, I should say. OCI OS object. I'm working in the object store list. This will list the contents of the nominated bucket, minus BN public bucket. And there's nothing there. Perhaps I want to upload a file. OCI OS object put. I need to know the namespace of my tenancy, which I've extracted there already. Bucket name, public bucket, file. I'm uploading a file I happen to have, root directory, index.html. Check it in the console. And there it is. Oops. Public bucket. And there it is, uploaded. No problem at all. To confirm it, I'll just rerun the listing command. And we'll see the format coming back, that there is something in there. It's going to come back formatted as JSON. The default output of everything to the CLI is JSON. So there it is, index.html. Uh, if you're not happy with JSON, as an example, minus minus output table. And this will give you the results in a form that perhaps is easier to understand. Well, perhaps that's easier to understand. So that's just a few simple examples. So to conclude, that's the OCI. CLI. It's pretty straightforward to install and use. The syntax isn't always intuitive, but it is very well documented. And I would say that becoming familiar with it is essential for all OCI administrators. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.